We didn't shoot a video yesterday because Siren was feeling just a little bit under the weather. But the good news is she's feeling much better today. Stay tuned because when we come back, we're going to be in on our last two overnights and Siren's going to give you her review of the Circle B Campground in Angola, Indiana. And we're going to show you what happens when the Garmin, well, it accidentally put us on the back roads trying to find Charlestown State Park. And that starts right now on the Gadget Guru. We're en route to Nashville, Tennessee, where I'm going to visit with some family and I'm going to catch up with some of my motorhome friends. So, Siren, what do we have on the schedule today? So, we just went through Louisville, Kentucky, and uh, we have a relatively straight shot to Nashville today. We're on this road for another 142 miles, and then we're going to get on I-40 and just loop right around into where we need to be. Well, as we all know, the Nashville traffic, well, it can be hit or miss. You know, we should be going through there around 11.30 or 12 o'clock on a Monday, so hopefully we'll be hitting it at off-peak times. Now, let's go on and, and go backwards here. Two nights ago, we stayed at the Circle B. Where we left off in the last episode, uh, you know, I had selected that campground basically for its location and proximity, you know, to our route. Uh, it was only just a few minutes off. I had stayed there once last year. You hadn't stayed there. What's your impression of the Circle B? Well, I know when you come in the gate and you look at the slips that are right there, it's a completely different world than what you see when you go on further into the campground. It's actually huge. And I think I still only saw maybe two thirds of it. Um, I ended up going for a walk and I walked all the way through the back and down, t there's a lake, there's big toy, inflatable things in the lake there's canoes there are um pontoon boats little docks kayaks everyone was out of their campers everyone was riding around having fires listening to music it, it was a very family oriented place um but yeah it was extremely active you know what I like, we had a pull through, we didn't even disconnect, we had enough Kentucky Fried Chicken to get us through that stay. Uh, and you know, in the office, did you go into the store they had there? I never did. Well, they have a store, I'll throw some pictures up there, they just have just about anything that you would need while camping, and the folks that work there just could not be any nicer. Um, you know, I, I would recommend that place. It's a great overnight, or if you're into more of the, you know, the, the camping RV style, you know, it is a fun place to go. Now, let's go in and fast forward. From there, you know, in route to Nashville, we stopped in uh, Charlestown, Indiana. I always think it's Charlestown, Kentucky, because it's right just north of Louisville. I stayed there last year, and I remember last year, my friend who I was visiting, he had told me, he said, remember when you go, don't take the exit. Your GPS is going to go, go one exit further. Well, I forgot. And we took the exit the Garmin told us to go. And oddly enough, this was not the route that the RV triplers had told us to go. They told us to go, well, a much better route. Um, we're going to roll some video in here. Tell me, uh, what was your thought as we were getting off? And, and what, what was that highway number? 160. When we got on Highway 160, I, I think that my, my first clue, when we saw a sign, and this is after we were past the point of no return, it said, no semis through, or no, no through semis. Um, what was your thought about it? Well, we've been in some other places, so I, I kind of gave it the benefit of the doubt, and I thought, well, we're not, like, I know we're heavy, but we're not carrying a huge load. We're probably okay. Well, this wasn't about weight. This wasn't a bridge. This was about no. the narrowness of the road. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, we didn't know that at that moment. But, um, you know, I think it was the most scenic part of the trip that we might have the entire way back to Florida. It was very pretty. Yeah, it was, it was narrow. I mean, there were, there were some points in there that kind of gave us flashbacks to... <laughs> um, to mountain falls and right. going but we knew that was coming we really didn't know that was coming on there i didn't think it was really that bad but it was really tight well i think i passed my driving test on that one what do you think yeah i think so you know there was one point where we were coming around a turn and i saw uh, a pickup truck towing i believe i don't remember if it was a fifth wheel or a trailer and we had slowed down to about two or three miles an hour mm -hmm. so then when we met them 
you know, it, it wouldn't be any pucker moments. And he did not slow down until the very last moment. I, no, think, he didn't. I think he had a bigger pucker moment than what we did. <laughs> uh, anyway, okay, tell us your impressions at the Charlestown State Park. It was very well kept. Um, it was very quiet. It was not busy. There were not a lot of people in there, but it is, you know, after, you know, kids are back in school and everything right now, so that's probably why. Um, but yeah, it was very well kept and it was pretty. It was nice. You know, when I first checked in, when we pulled up to the booth, you know, and I had a reservation there. First of all, check in. And by the way, check in at the other place, uh, the Circle B. Both of them were just seamless. I had prepaid in advance. But I came out, and the lady who was working there on Sunday, she came and she goes, you know, I think that's the biggest RV that has ever been in this campground. <laughs> uh, now, in case you're thinking about staying there and you are in a big rig or something like this, this Prevo, um, it, yeah, first of all, look at the map. Take Highway 62 coming in off, off of the uh, interstate to get there. Um, I wouldn't call this big rig friendly, but I wouldn't call it big rig unfriendly. Their, uh, their longest back end spots, and they, they don't have pull throughs, uh, are 45 feet. But, you know, when you consider you have your tow hitch on the back, uh, or you know, uh, the Blue Ox tow bar that extends over, you barely make it in the space. In fact, we were about a foot over, but it did not present any problems. Let me go back to the Circle B for a moment. You'll notice that uh, our electrical and our water were, were close by. In fact, they had a little pump thing that the neighbor had to show me how to work. But our sewer, we had to use the extension. Now, at Charlestown, uh, the electric was all the way in the back, you know, and our, our marathon uh, electrical cord would not have gone that far, so we had to use an extension. That was no big deal. But we also had to use the extension for the sewer hose. It was all the way back there. And and what's your thoughts when we use the extension hose? I thought I was all right. You know, I had to put my foot, you know, on the end there so it doesn't come flying out. But I mean, we don't we don't dump directly into the thing we we go and manually push the button yeah, so we, we, we have fill our that, tanks first and then before we leave we like to travel with with full water and, and empty waste tanks okay so we're now in route to nashville what we're going to do we're going to dry camp there so so what we did we just stopped at the uh, kentucky welcome center and, and what we're doing you know me and my rest areas i'm sure if you've been watching this series you know i like to know where all the rest areas are by the way we have a right lane closure coming up here in a minute so let me go in get around. In preparation for a dry camping experience, what we do, uh, our, you know, our typical thing is when we get to a rest area, we just take a quick restroom break here on the bus. But since we're going to go a couple of days with, with limited resources, then we just get out and, and use the facilities over there. Okay, Siren, anything else? I think that's all. To keep posted of Siren's adventures, just go to Instagram.com slash Siren Williams or just simply at Siren Williams. And to keep posted at my adventures, just go to facebook.com slash the gadget guru. And don't forget to like us on YouTube at youtube.com slash the gadget guru. And remember, if you like this video, you're going to like this one. And if you like that one, you're going to like one of these. That's it for now. I'm the gadget guru, Andy Park. <laughs>